Hi there, welcome to the video. My name's Josh, and today we'll be taking a look at the Zealot Preacher from the upcoming game Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. This will be my final class overview prior to release, since I've already covered the other classes. And if you are curious about those other classes, be sure to check out my other overviews where I've covered the Psyker, Veteran, and Ogren characters. So with all that said, let's get into the overview. So first thing, we should answer what is a zealot. The definition of a zealot is a person who is fanatical and uncompromising in pursuit of their religious, political, or other ideals. In the case of the zealot, and Warhammer 40k in general, this would relate to the imperial cult for their ideals. So the zealot is likely involved in some way or another with the Ecclesiarchy, or Adeptus Ministorum as it's also known, which is essentially the official state church of the Imperium of Mankind. The Ecclesiarchy promotes the worship of the Emperor of Mankind as the one true god of humanity. Now, while all citizens of the Imperium are expected to follow and devote themselves to the Imperial cult, the Zealot takes this devotion to an extreme level. They would be someone who would actively seek out, judge, and punish non-believers and heretics alike. So now that we've established what the Zealot is, let's take a look at some of their righteous weaponry. First, we'll go over the general ranged weapons that they'll have access to. First we have the LAS guns, which are good medium to long ranged weapons. Next we have the auto guns, which function more in the close to medium range. Then we have the auto pistols, which excel at close range, work fine at medium range, but are fairly inaccurate at longer ranges. We also have the revolver, which is a very accurate high damage weapon that works well at all ranges. And lastly we have the shotgun, which was probably my favourite weapon overall from the test. It deals high damage, fires fairly rapidly, and actually has surprising range as well. Next, we'll take a quick look at the general melee weapons that the Zealot had access to. First we had the Katachan Knives, which were great cleave tools and you are able to deal with hordes quite quickly with those. We also had the Axes, which were great single target weapons and were able to punch through armour quite easily. And we also had the Chainsword, which, similar to the Katachan Knives, they were able to deal with hordes quite easily, but they also had the added benefit of revving up and cutting through those armoured targets. Now, for their unique weapon options from the closed test, we first had the Power Hammer, which many reported to be probably the strongest weapon from the closed test. If you're familiar with Vermintide, it shares the same moveset as Kruber and Barden's Maul, but if you're not familiar with Vermintide, this is basically how it works. The light attacks are primarily used to deal a high amount of single target damage, and it also punches through armour so it's very handy against those armour deletes. As for the heavy attacks, these are very easy to control horizontal swings that go from left to right. The swings themselves have a lot of cleave, and they deal fairly heavy stagger to the enemies, so it's really good in horde situations. The last part of the power hammer is the special attack button, where it charges up the power hammer, and on the next swing it'll be single target, and will deal massive damage and stagger. Their other unique weapon is the flamer, which is something we didn't have access to on the closed beta test. I can assume that this will likely have good AoE, and will also likely apply some sort of damage over time effect the longer that you hold the flame on the target possibly building up to a massive amount of DPS. But this is just speculation on my part, we'll have to wait for the official release to find out how exactly it works. Now let's get into the base kit for the Zealot Preacher. First we have their Blitz ability, which is Stun Grenade. Throw a Stun Grenade, that stuns all enemies within the blast radius. So this is basically a crowd control tool, it's really handy for preemptively locking down enemies but it's also very clutch for situations where you have multiple downed teammates, since you can basically throw it on top of your teammate and stun all the enemies around them, and then fairly safely get your teammate back up. Another great thing about this Blitz ability is that it actually comes with three grenades, and you get all three back whenever you pick up a grenade box. Next we have their Aura, which is the Emperor's Will. This provides a plus 10% toughness damage reduction to yourself and allies with incoherency. Next we have their active ability, Chastise the Wicked. 
the Preacher dashes forward or towards a targeted enemy, replenishing all toughness, increasing the damage of the next melee hit by 25%, and making it a guaranteed critical hit. So this is an incredibly powerful ability, mainly due to getting all your toughness back when you use it. One of the major threats that I noticed in Dark Tide were the ranged enemies constantly shooting at me, which is especially troublesome when you're out of toughness. But with this ability, you can effectively replenish your toughness and charge them down, forcing them into melee combat. Next up, we'll go through their iconic abilities. First, we have a Swift Exorcism, which gives plus 10% melee attack speed. Then we have Martyrdom, which gives plus 5 damage for each 15 missing health, stacks 3 times. And Until Death. Every 90 seconds, taking damage that would kill you, gain invulnerability for 5 seconds. So from the active ability and the first iconic, you can probably tell that the Zealot Preacher is intended to be a melee specialist. And if you're familiar with the Zealot from Vermintide 2, you're probably seeing a lot of familiar things here. Now, unlike the Vermintide 2 Zealot, the second iconic Martyrdom doesn't incentivize you losing your entire health bar and then trying to regain temporary health or toughness in Dark Tide's case. Instead, you can reach all three stacks by only losing 45 health. And in the Zealot's case, since they have 200 total health, which is a bit higher than some of the other characters, but not the Ogren, uh, they can actually stand to sit around about 155 health or less, so basically about three quarters of their total health pool. And for the third iconic ability, Until Death, this one's incredibly clutch since the difference between winning and losing can be down to surviving just another swing or two. Next we'll go over all of the adjustable feats for the Zealot. The feats are outlined in six columns. There are three feats per column. These columns are unlocked every five levels. You can only have one feat selected at a time from each column. And your feats can be adjusted at any time in between matches. So let's start with the level 25 column. First we have Purify in Blood. Replenish 100% more toughness on melee kill. Then Faith Restored, which gives plus 33% toughness damage reduction on critical hit for 3 seconds. And Enemies In, Enemies Without. Replenish 7% toughness per second while within 8 meters of any enemy. So I went back and looked through some of my gameplay footage from the closed beta test, and from what I can tell, you get about 5 or 6 toughness back on each kill. So Purifying Blood would be upping that to about 10 or 11 per kill. As for Restored Faith, I initially didn't think much of this one, but after looking through some of their other feats, I think if you can get a high enough crit chance and combine it with a few other toughness damage reduction feats, you can really start to stack up your total damage reduction, which may make the Zealot quite tanky overall. And for enemies within, enemies without, this seems like a really good general pick, since that 7% toughness per second basically equates to 7 toughness per second, as long as you're close to the enemies. And since it's not reliant upon getting kills like Purify and Blood, it's actually just a good, consistent source of toughness regeneration. Now for the level 10 column, we have Zealous Rage, which gives plus 10% melee critical chance. No Mercy for the Traitor, which gives plus 20% damage versus stunned heretics. And Retribution, plus 10% attack speed below 50% health, and bonuses doubled below 20% health. So I think the best general pick in this column is Zealous Rage, since a consistent 10% melee crit chance is really solid. No Mercy for the Trader is going to be a bit more situational, since it does rely on you attacking enemies that have been affected by your stun grenade. But considering you get free uses of the grenade, this can still come up quite frequently, especially if you have a veteran who has the right setup on your team. And Retribution is definitely a bit of a double-edged sword, since the attack speed bonus depends upon your missing health. I would say that this seems like an okay pick, but I just really hope that we don't see the meta for the Zealot from Vermintide 2, where they would purposely take hits to get their health as low as possible, then rely on temp health generation for the rest of the map. 
This was fine for skilled players and usually wasn't too much of an issue, but I did notice that some of the newer players trying this tactic would struggle a lot. That said, I don't think this is going to be as much of an issue in Darktide because it is much harder to avoid taking damage in Darktide as opposed to Vermintide 2. So the less than 20% health bonus is more likely going to be something that's helpful when it does happen to come up, not something that you'd actively be wanting to lower your health for. Now we'll move on to the level 15 column. First we have Litanies of Hate. Your Coherency Aura now also grants plus 1% crit chance for each stack of Martyrdom. Then Benediction, plus 20% toughness damage reduction for allies in Coherency. And Inspiring Excoriation. Using Chastise for Wicked replenishes 15% toughness to allies in Coherency. So at first glance, the 3% crit chance from Litanies of Hate may not seem like much, but you do have to remember that it applies not just to yourself, but your entire team. And it does also have a synergy in a later column, which we'll get into shortly. As for Benediction, the 20% toughness damage reduction is just a good general pick. That's going to help yourself. It's also going to help your teammates. And Inspiring Excoriation is a good support pick if you're able to use your active ability quite frequently. Now we'll move on to the level 20 column. First we have Holy Revenant. When Until Death ends, you gain health based on the damage you dealt during Until Death. Melee damage dealt heals for twice the amount. Then Vi Wrath Be Swift. You no longer get stunned by enemy melee attacks. When you take damage, gain plus 30% movement speed for 2 seconds. And Faith Restores All. After taking damage, you regain 30% of the damage taken over 5 seconds. Alright, so let's go over how Holy Revenant works exactly. So this ties in with your iconic free ability, Until Death, which basically allows you to take a hit that would otherwise kill you, and then also become invincible for the next 5 seconds. Then from Holy Revenant, during those 5 seconds of invulnerability, any damage that you deal is added up, and you'll receive this as healing at the end of the 5 seconds. You'll also receive double healing for any melee damage dealt during this period. This seems like an incredibly powerful feat, since you can basically without risk just spam out your attacks during that 5 second period, then gain back what may be quite a substantial amount of healing. Now we don't know exactly what the damage numbers are on the weapons, but we know at least from Martyrdom that you'll be at least getting plus 15 damage from that. So. Hypothetically, even if your weapon only did 5 damage per attack, that's still a total of 20 damage, and even if you only get 5 attacks off in the 5 second period, which you should get a lot more off, that would still end up being 100 damage. And since you heal double for melee damage, this could potentially heal your entire life bar. But with all that said, there are two major drawbacks that I can think of for this ability. First, Until Death does only trigger once every 90 seconds, now, 90 seconds is plenty of time to survive in between fights, but if you're in a particularly dangerous situation where it's already activated and you're still in danger even after getting all your health back, it's probably not going to help you again in that situation and you might end up wiping from it. The other drawback is if the effect triggers from a ranged attack, because then you might not be in a situation where you can safely fire back, and you might actually be out of melee range, so it would effectively just waste the 90 second cooldown without any benefit to yourself. The next feed option, Vi Wrath Be Swift, is, in my opinion, probably the weakest from this column, mainly because I'm not the biggest fan of movement speed effects, but I do think the stun immunity aspect of this feed is pretty helpful, since taking a hit can ruin your melee combo and throw you off your game a bit. And the last one from this column, Faith Restores All. This one's probably the best general pick, since it's something that will be coming up quite frequently, and it also doesn't specify between toughness damage or health damage, so this would really help with your moment-to-moment -moment survivability. Next, we'll move on to the level 25 column. First we have Emperor's Executioner. Deal up to 20% increased range damage based on proximity to the target. Then we have Rising Conviction, plus 5% damage for 5 seconds on hit, max stacks 5, and Honor the Martyr. Martyrdom has 6 max stacks. 
So Emperor's Executioner is a bit of a funny one since the Zealot Preacher seems to be mainly focused on getting up close and dealing melee damage. But that said, we haven't seen their full arsenal, so I suspect this would work well with the shotgun, auto pistols, flamer, and possibly some other weapons that we haven't seen yet. As for Rising Conviction, this one seems like a really good general pick, mainly because the 5% increase stacking 5 times would actually be really easy to maintain since you just need to keep hitting the enemies. And it also doesn't specify whether or not it has to be a melee attack, so you could quickly swap to your ranged weapon to fire off a few shots just to maintain the stacks. And for Honor the Martyr, this is adding an extra 3 stacks to your martyrdom, so that effectively means that you can lose up to a total of 90 health, leaving your health at 110 or less to get the full effect from martyrdom. So this works quite well with Retribution, since you can get your health just a bit lower, down below that halfway point, and then you'll start getting a 10% attack speed boost. This also has a direct synergy with Litanies of Hate, where you get plus 1% crit chance per stack of martyrdom, so rather than a total of 3, you can have a total of 6. And this applies as an aura in your coherency as well, so it's a 6% critical hit increase to both yourself and your allies. Also, just another thing to touch on, there is a little bit of an unknown element with the damage numbers when it comes to comparing Rising Conviction and Honor the Martyr, since when they're both at their full effect, one is effectively giving plus 25% extra damage, and the other is giving plus 30 damage. So one's a percentage and one's a flat damage increase. So we don't really know what the actual base weapon damage numbers are, so it's a little bit hard to compare those two. Now we'll move on to the final row. First we have Invocation of Death. Melee critical hits reduce the cooldown of Chastise the Wicked by one second. Fury of the Faithful, plus 20% attack speed for five seconds on using Chastise the Weak. And Purge the Wicked. Chastise for Weak now has two charges. So for Invocation of Death, I think this one could be really good if you combine it with Zealous Rage, Litanies of Hate, and a really high fire rate weapon like the Auto Pistol, or a very fast attacking melee weapon like the Catachin Knives, for example. I went back through some of my gameplay clips to check how long the cooldown was on Chastise for Wicked, and while I think some of the attacks that I made actually reduced the cooldown, similar to how it works in Vermintide 2, I think it was sitting around 25 seconds to 30 seconds, most likely 30 seconds, since I think my attacks during the cooldown helped bring it back faster. So this means that if you can stack up your crit chance high enough and just blast into something with your auto pistol, you can probably just straight up take off about half of the cooldown at least. Next, for Fury of the Faithful, this one seems like a really good general pick since it's just a straight up attack speed increase for 5 seconds after using Chastise for Wicked. It might also have some solid synergy with Retribution, where you may be able to stack up to about 40% extra attack speed, at least for a short duration. And lastly, for Purge for Wicked, this one seems like a really solid choice and might actually be the best one in this column since on top of giving you extra mobility from the dash itself, but it's also fully replenishing your toughness each time you use it, so having two at-use abilities that can just fully give you back all your toughness is really going to help with your survivability. Again, I think this may actually be the best pick for this column, especially if you're struggling with the game a bit. Now that we've gone over their feed options and their base kit, let's just quickly go over what they're good at, and what their role is within the game. So the Zealot is clearly a melee specialist. They want to be getting up in the thick of the fight and closing the distance on ranged enemies as soon as possible, forcing them into a melee fight. They're also quite tanky. They're able to reduce their damage taken, regain their toughness quite easily, and possibly even regain actual health depending on their build. They're also able to deal a massive amount of damage. For example, the special button for the power hammer, which charges it up, 
actually dealt, from what I could tell, the most damage of any single attack in the closed beta test. So depending on your build, you'll likely be the one dealing with the hordes and also going head to head with the elites and boss monsters. But where the zealot might struggle is when it comes to the special enemies, in particular the ones that deal in area denial, such as the Tox Flamer and Bomber, and also the enemies that work at a extreme range beyond what your dash can cover, such as the Sniper, the Scab Gunner, and also the Ogre and Reaper. Now before we finish up the video, I did want to go over a couple of builds that I've come up with for the Zealot. The first one is a crit build. So in column 1, we'd want to go with Faith Restored for the increased toughness damage reduction uh, whenever you crit. Now the other options may actually be better for overall toughness regeneration, but I think we just want to pick anything that synergizes with your crit chance. In the second column, Zealous Rage is the best pick since it's just a flat 10% crit chance increase. Then from the third column, Litanies of Hate for a further increased crit chance. From the fourth column, Holy Revenant. I think this one's probably just the best option for this build since it adds some decent survivability when you are in those really clutch situations. Um, Faith Restores could also be another good option for that road, but I think Holy Revenant would be a fun, interesting build. And from the fifth column, I would be going with Honor the Martyr. That way you're getting increased stacks of martyrdom, which then ties in with Litanies of Hate for an even further increased crit chance. And for the final column, Invocation of Death is the best pick here, since being able to reduce the cooldown on your Chastise for Wicked every time that you crit is just going to tie in really well with this build. So with this build you should be able to get crits fairly consistently, which means that you'll be dealing a lot of damage. Uh, you'll also be running around at about half health, but if you ever make any mistakes and find yourself falling on very low health, you'll actually be able to utilize Holy Revenant to try and get your health back. For the next build, I went with a little bit more of a ranged slash support focus in mind. So from the first column, we'd go with enemies within, enemies without for just the passive toughness replenishment. Then the second column, we'd go with No Mercy for the Traitor for increased damage against stunned heretics. And in the third column, we'd go with Inspiring Excoriation. Using Chastise for Wicked replenishes 15% toughness to allies and coherency. So that one's just a good little buff to your allies. And for the fourth column, we'd go with Faith Restores All. After taking damage, you regain 30% of the damage taken over 5 seconds. So this one's just a good extra bump to your survivability. And then in the fifth column, we'd be going with Emperor's Executioner. This is the feat that this whole ranged build is kind of based around. So deal up to 20% increased range damage based on proximity to the target. So I believe that means that you want to be close to the target. So grabbing something like a shotgun or a uh, auto pistol should be a really good option there. And you just start blasting into the target. And in the final column, we would go with Purge the Wicked. So Chastise the Wicked now has two charges. And this ties back in with Inspiring Excoriation. That way you can actually use your charges actively to try and help replenish your allies' toughness as well. Now the main purpose of this build is you would basically be throwing out your stun grenades to stun enemies closing the distance, then unloading with your ranged weapon, basically dealing an increased 40% damage. The third build I've got here is the speed or crackhead build as I've dubbed it. The first column you'll want to go with Purify in Blood for increased toughness on melee kill. Then in the second column, Retribution to increase your attack speed while you're at low health. From the third column, Benediction, just to increase your general overall toughness. Fourth column, Virath be swift. You're no longer stunned by enemy melee attacks, and when you take damage, you gain plus 30% movement speed for two seconds. I think this one's pretty funny for this build, since you can basically purposely get hit by attacks, just ignore them entirely without getting stunned, and just sprint at the enemy shooters. 
For the fifth column, you'd want to go with Rising Conviction or Honor the Martyr, whichever one ends up doing more damage. And in the sixth column, you'd want to be going with Fury of the Faithful, just to further increase your attack speed. So this entire build is just about sprinting at the enemy, mitigating some damage, and attacking as fast as possible. And for the last build I have here, this one is what I'd consider to be a fairly good beginner build, since it's quite tanky. So in the first column, you'd want to go with Faith Restored, which gives the increased toughness damage reduction on a critical hit. You could also go with the other ones, but I think, again, just synergizing with some crits would be interesting on this build. Uh, second column, we'd be going with Zealous Rage for the increased crit chance. Third column, we would actually be taking Benediction for the increased toughness damage reduction. In the fourth column, we would want to be going with Faith Restores All, which regenerates 30% of the damage taken over 5 seconds. In the fifth column, We'd want to go with Rising Conviction, or possibly Honor the Martyr, but I, I would say in this build we want to keep our health as high as possible, so Rising Conviction is probably the best option. And in the sixth column, Purge the Wicked, that way you can basically reset your toughness on command. So this build is all about stacking up damage reduction and mitigating as much damage as possible. So from... Faith Restored, Benediction, and also the base aura that comes with the Zealot, the Emperor's Will, you'll effectively have a total of 63% toughness damage reduction, at least for a short while after you crit. And on top of this massive damage reduction, we're also reducing the actual damage we take by another 30% from Faith Restores All. So if you're a new player that really struggled with survivability, this might be a really solid build for you. Alright, that covers the overview for the Zealot Preacher. And that's also the final class in my overview series, at least until release when they bring out some more classes. I'm probably going to be a bit dry on content, at least until the 17th when they do the pre-order closed beta, at which point I plan on doing some introductory combat tips and tricks videos. and. Possibly an update to the overviews if there's any major changes to the classes. But yeah, thanks for watching guys, and take it easy.